the reality is that we're not clean and green, we're dirty and brown, and we're not 100% pure. The brand is, is hugely important, not just to the products, and not just to us differentiating ourselves in the world market, but it's also how we identify ourselves as a nation. You know, it's critically important, and that's what gives a country its soul, and, uh, and what we're doing, we're shitting on the soul. Industrial daring is New Zealand's biggest contributor to climate change. But it's not only threatening the climate, it's also threatening our clean green brand. Tens of thousands of hectares of forests have already been felled to make way for corporate farms. Another half million hectares is at risk, over seven times the size of Lake Taupo and a quarter of the nation's total plantation. The conversion of forests to large-scale dairy farms serves as a double whammy for the climate. It destroys forests and replaces them with one of the most greenhouse gas intensive forms of land use. Nitrous oxide emissions, mostly caused by the use of chemical fertilizer on industrial farms, now exceed all the emissions from road transport in New Zealand. Nitrous oxide is a greenhouse gas 300 times more potent than carbon dioxide. Thousands of people are losing jobs in New Zealand's boom and bust drive to corporate dairy. Others are finding their lives affected in other ways. Kevin O'Toole lives on a neighboring property to this land in the central North Island, where Landcorp is axing 25,000 hectares of pine. He says trees, birds, hunting spots and good soil drainage are becoming things of the past and that the land will never recover. I think it's too bloody late. I think it's too late. This, basically, the noise that I'm trying to make is people have to learn something from this and stop it from happening in other areas. The rampant corporatization and intensification of daring is not sustainable and not in line with how we market ourselves offshore. If we continue down this path, we're essentially shooting ourselves in the economic foot. It's very important in the future as we're seeing consumers around the world wanting low impact time for produce, especially on the climate. And if New Zealand's not careful, they will lose that advantage and they will find that the markets will start to close internationally to them. Particularly in the central North Island, intensive dairying is also having a hugely negative impact on an equally important sector, tourism. The difficulty is that intensive agriculture actually compromises the other one. Uh, if New Zealand is building a brand around its 100% pure, clean and green brand, all of the components of industry that have an ability to affect that should be monitored and measured and managed uh, to not compromise it. Steve Barry is a former dairy farmer who now runs a fishing shop in Taupo. I was a dairy farmer, yes, yep, yep. Um, I was quite happy to, to uh, not care too much about our waterways. Um, if we had spillovers and effluent ponds and things like that, we did get onto it as soon as we could, but it certainly wasn't life or death. The big systems that are going out into the Waikato area, there's no doubt, no one can say that it's not going to be affected. It's going to turn to rubbish. To. They're majorly concerned, as I say, all this development's been in the last year to 18 months, so there's not a lot of evidence yet. But um, there's no doubt that all the fishermen don't want it to happen. There's, you know, there's no good in it. Greenpeace is not anti-farming. We believe the time has come for New Zealanders to ask themselves what they really value and for the link to be clearly drawn between our three biggest export sectors, agriculture, tourism and forestry. First of all, we need to see the deforestation that is occurring for the dairy expansion halted immediately. Secondly, we need to see all of agriculture brought into the emissions trading scheme that has been set up in New Zealand to help incentivize new alternative methods of farming that help reduce the emissions. And in the longer term, what is needed is a comprehensive policy package that helps and supports farmers move to less intensive farming and over to some more sustainable, low emission farming, which is going to be good for the farmers, it's going to be good for New Zealand, and it'll be good for the clean and green brand of this country as well. For more information, go to www.greenpeace.org.nz forward slash smart farming.